Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sprint 246 review. This was a normal two-week sprint. Let's get started. I'll start with the overview. Uh, Gilbert's out right now, so I'll be taking on the UI. Adam on providers, Joe on the platform, and Keenan on the API. Um, as you can see, this is a pretty light sprint, um, but not too bad. We had 60 PRs merge this sprint um, and pretty evenly spaced between bugs and enhancements. Uh, on the UI side, um, the bug one big bug was fixed, which is fixing the A method workflow template summary page, and I'll have some screenshots for that. Uh, and then there were some dependency updates for security issues. Um, we updated Lodash to drop a to fix a critical issue in uh, Lodash, and Path to Regex had a couple of high issues that we uh, dealt with this this sprint. Uh, on the internationalization side, Joe has been working on getting um, it, the English translations uh, in, and also uh, trying to automate some of the th some of the work behind actually getting these uh, translation files in. So uh, you can kind of see it here: the AE method summary template page, um, before and after, um, and fixed uh, a couple of bugs in there. And over to Adam on the providers. Thanks, Jason. Uh, for core of this sprint for providers, we added a couple of uh, operating system and vendor types to support changes in some of the other provider plugins. So we added the Photon OS uh, VMware operating system type and OpenShift virtualization vendor types, which probably gives it away, but you can kind of guess what's coming later. Uh, for Azure, uh, we cleaned up, uh, Samuel cleaned up a network interface and a public IP address on provision failure. So what was happening was on Azure, when you clone a VM, we pre-create the um, the NIC and the and the floating public IP. And if the clone fails, those don't automatically get cleaned up by Azure since they're not technically associated to the instance yet. So we added some steps uh, in the state machine to clean up anything that was created already if the uh, provision fails. For uh, OpenShift, we added the OpenShift virtualization uh, infra manager, which is a subclass of Kubvirt. So if you are adding a Kubernetes provider, you'll continue to see the Kubvirt uh, as the virtualization option. And if you add OpenShift, you'll see OpenShift virtualization as the option for the virtualization endpoint. Next slide. Uh, for over and rev, uh, Keenan updated the Overt Engine SDK to 4.6.0 uh, is just a good way to get us up to date as well as to support uh, Ruby 3.3. And for workflows, we dropped the uh, log level on event debug to uh, uh, on event logs to debug so that we can reduce the noise uh, in the logging. And uh, if we go to the next slide, we'll have a couple of demos uh, for the event driven. Workflows, which was uh, added a couple sprints ago, but uh, good to get some video evidence of what was changed. Uh, so next slide. So here we can see the uh, polling method that we were doing previously. So these are some dynamic dialogues that are backed by a workflow. And we were um, polling every 10 seconds previously. These uh, all, Both of these return essentially immediately. But in order to try to balance between checking too frequently for something that runs for a very long time uh, versus um, not checking often enough for something that runs very quickly, we kind of try to strike a balance there. But obviously, it's dramatically better to just use events, which is what this one is. So you can see that um, took about 20 seconds total, um, you know, 10 seconds for each. And then this one, we are using, uh, pod, in this case, Podman events. But we also support Kubernetes events if you're running on Kubernetes. Um, so you can see we've got uh, events coming in as it as it finishes, um, and so it's uh, done already. So it goes from about twenty seconds to about I think it was like five seconds or something like that. So uh, dramatically faster. And that is it for providers. Over to Joe. Thanks, Adam. For uh, platform enhancements, uh, Samuel changed the request task state machine, uh, adding an optional read. Uh, read Q phase deliver on value, and it defaults it to 10 seconds from now. Next, Brandon enhanced the pot, uh, Podified side to restart pods when a certificate is renewed. Jason added Ruby 3.2 and 3.3 testing on more core extensions. And for translations, we removed the location of strings in English files as they've not been, they're not been needed. And um, it was really growing the file tremendously. It was, I think, over two megabytes before and under one megabyte after. 
um, that just improved everything, uh, readability, but also in some of the systems trying to consume that. And we updated the English and other language translations based on this change. And um, we added some logic so we can automate some of the uh, work on the UI side for generating these UI JSON files. Next slide. Oh, I'm sorry, go back one. Uh, I've removed some remaining deprecated RSS code and models, product features, alerts, and dashboards. Um, and Adam verified we're not using the old Rails connection handling, so we can opt into the new Rails connection handling to avoid a noisy warning. While looking at the translations, I also saw that we could use a optimization to avoid writing our own error handling. So I did that with uh, uh, kernel system. Next, JSON bump more core extensions to the minimum 4.5. And he also added several Breakman improvements. He upgraded Breakman to version 5, configured it to use pr Prism, and ignored the prog progress indicator that was very noisy on CI. Next slide. OK, now for platform bugs, uh, Keenan changed the virtual attributes to pass all of the expected keyword arguments to the Rails preloader. Next, Adam fixed a bug missing UUID tools at server startup. Adam also added a Podman cleanup one-shot service to ensure any temporary files are cleaned from persistent storage. Uh, Jason fixed a pass-by reference bug in the operator. Keenan updated the Ansible requirements to address an issue with uh, uh, PYVMOMI not having JSON output support. And Jason fixed a bug in the service UI productization. Uh, it was not correctly handling if the desired symlink directory already existed. And Brandon fixed the bots build by resolving some dependency conflicts and a missing header. Next slide. Uh, so in part of the RSS um, modifications that uh, Joe made, uh, over in the API, uh, we modified the tests to no longer reference RSS. Yep, pretty straightforward. On to you, Jason. All right, and that's all for our Sprint 246 review. Our next Sprint review 247 will be on October 2nd at the regular place and time. Uh, and as always, I'd like to thank all the presenters today, uh, all the contributors to Manage our queue and our community. Thanks a lot.